Last week, Microsoft announced the next killer Windows feature, Microsoft Recall. And most people who understood what the hell it actually does promptly freaked right out. Storing a catalog of everything that you do <clears throat> locally seems like a terrible idea to many, many people. And even if you were going to do that, is like Microsoft really the company that you trust to deliver that software in a privacy respecting manner? You know, I say this as a historically Windows fanboy. I've, I've used Windows on every computer I've ever owned. But, you know, honestly, ever since Windows 11, and yeah, sure, probably well before that, a lot of people will argue. But ever since Windows 11 came out, Microsoft has totally lost the plot when it comes to respecting user privacy and autonomy. And before anybody gets the wrong idea, no, Apple really isn't the answer here. They may offer marginally better privacy, but the trade-off is that you get the least amount of user autonomy and choice of any major operating system. More on that in a little bit. But back to the problem, which is Microsoft Recall. You know, this new feature that Windows is going to have that's going to record everything on your screen so that you can search through it later and definitely won't easily allow Microsoft or anybody else, you know, to access that stuff later in case they need it for an investigation or to exploit you or to hold it ransom. Uh, anyway, you know, I'm sure that recall is going to start off as an optional feature, just like a lot of Windows major integrations when they first roll out. But just like Windows Explorer, Cortana, Edge, putting ads in your start menu or on your lock screen, or, you know, automatically forcing updates and then restarting your computer without, you know, you being able to disable that. That's all up to Microsoft, whether or not the option to have recall enabled actually gets respected in future updates. Yeah, there's a toggle today, but that's the magic of the modern day EULA. You've already given them permission to ignore that choice if they want to. So, you know, if Microsoft wants to put an edge shortcut on your desktop, well, it's just going to show up. If they want to remove the ability to remove telemetry, well, the toggle can just disappear. And even if you use group policy editor, they can just ignore your configuration if they want to. If they want ads in your menus and in your lock screens, well, they're just going to be there whether you like it or not, and you won't be able to turn them off. And the same thing's going to happen with Recall. It'll probably start off as an option that's default setting is off and you have to enable it. Or maybe it'll be enabled, but they'll very clearly tell you you can turn it off. And then later, it'll be harder to turn it off. The setting may be ignored. It'll be auto flipped every time they update. Or the toggle will just disappear and it'll be moved to some group policy. Or you'll have to edit a registry key. And then later, maybe that'll disappear. And eventually, if they want it to be on, it's going to be on. That's how Windows does things. So what are the options now? As a normal person, let's say you're not an elite hacker, you know, you could go to a Mac and a lot of people make that choice. But you will have far fewer choices and configurability and you'll still be trusting a single company to make all your data privacy decisions for you, hoping that they never sell your data out so that people can, you know, train AIs on them and generate other revenue from your information without compensating you for it. But you still may end up with occasionally people pieces of specialized software that don't have native support. And you know, there's probably going to be dual boot as an option, or you could spin up a virtual machine to handle those. But one big killer here is you lose almost all options with respect to hardware. You're going to use a Mac and it'll have the hardware that Apple decides it has, especially now that they're making their own processors. Hackintoshes are basically a thing of the past. And that leads us to today's conclusion. It's probably time to really start considering migrating to Linux. Now, hear me out. I know a lot of people have done this in the past and Linux kind of suck. And look, I know a lot of other people are going to get mad arguing, oh, Linux isn't that bad. But look, historically, it's been true. Linux has been a non-starter because it was just too much dicking around with configurations. Too many programs didn't work and couldn't be made to work. Gaming was really crappy. You know, you had to mess with wine and stuff just hardly ever worked well. Uh, Linux was just a hassle. And frankly, Windows was great 
I mean, look, people love to hate on it, but it worked. It worked on everything. And privacy wasn't a huge concern in the past. So why deal with all the headache of Linux when Windows was so easy? And frankly, there weren't that many big concerns about privacy and whether or not Windows was selling you as a product or using you to data mine and develop other products and sell those to their big corporate clients as AI enhanced features. But times have really changed when it comes to Linux. These days, it's quite good. Last month, I've got this old laptop and I spun up Linux Mint on it just because I wanted to see what the current state of Linux development was. And you know what? It just worked. It's an older Alienware laptop that has this dual GPU configuration, and that actually all just worked. I didn't have to set up anything. It automatically could switch between GPUs whenever I wanted. And distributions like Mint and Ubuntu these days come out of the box with basically every basic feature that you would want. And the vast majority of modern uses for computers like web browsing, office work, software development, pretty much anything can be done with very good native Linux applications. I mean... For example, the software that I use to edit my videos, DaVinci Resolve, is available natively on Linux. The EDA package that I use, KiCad, is open source and it's available natively on Linux. I make my video thumbnails in Inkscape, which again, it's available natively on Linux. And here's the shocking thing is that gaming worked. It, it actually worked very well. Ever since Valve started the Steam Deck, they've been using a Linux-based operating system. And Valve's done a ton of heavy lifting getting gaming working on Linux. And so with the advent of the Proton compatibility layer, I was able to get Helldivers 2, a fairly new modern game, up and running on an old laptop. And yeah, okay, the FPS was horrible because it was, again, an old laptop, but it worked. So that was kind of crazy to me. Plus, it looks like Linux support in the gaming area is actually growing rather than shrinking. Recent NVIDIA drivers are open source, and so that's going to be a big advantage going forward. Valve, again, has done a lot of work to make gaming on Linux a real thing. And in their recent Steam surveys, it looks like more people are actually gaming on Linux than on Macs. But look, I'm not going to try to blow smoke up your butt. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. Linux does still have some wonkiness. It does lack good H.265 support for video in web browsers. The DPI scaling on the desktop is still a little weird. And for a lot of people, there is the major deal breaker that there is no Adobe support and there's probably not going to be. Game support is pretty decent with Steam these days, but not everything is always available. So look, you are going to have some frustrations. So, you know, I mean, that said, look, Mac still has that same problem that there are certain pieces of software that are unavailable and gaming on Mac has really never been outstanding either and somehow all those people using Apple devices survive. So look, to, to sum up, I'm realistic. Moving to Linux is a very scary proposition. I'm not doing it immediately. My current desktop runs Windows 10 and I love Windows 10 for a lot of reasons, but support for Windows 10 is up after next year, but I'm probably gonna keep using this computer for quite a while. But someday I am gonna need a new computer. And when that time comes, it's more and more looking like I'm gonna move away from Windows for good. I just don't trust them anymore. They're causing too many problems. They're making too many decisions for their users. And I don't want my data to be data mined, to develop AI, to then sell me AI and just have AI forced integrations freaking everywhere. I don't need AI in my keyboard, which by the way, Microsoft just did recently on SwiftKey on Android. I don't need AI in WhatsApp. I don't need AI in Instagram or Facebook. I don't need AI on my phone everywhere. I don't need AI search. I don't need AI integrated into my desktop. I don't need AI sending my data everywhere so that people can develop more AI products using my data without paying me to use my data. I'm kind of sick of it. So yeah, my current computer will probably continue to be Windows for the foreseeable future. But your next computer, maybe it should be Linux.